Hey, what's up, guys? It's Icarus Forido. Welcome to the first edition of Ask Icarus. Um, to all those that submitted a uh, question, you guys are the real MVPs. You asked plenty of questions that range from my thoughts on things to my toilet techniques, so it should be pretty funny. Uh, I'm going to split this into two parts because I have so many questions, and I want to be able to give you guys good, uh, lengthy answers. Um, so this is part one. Uh, my girlfriend's going to be reading me the questions, so let's begin. Okay, first is from Devin Gonzalez. How and why did you make the decision to start using psychedelics? Um, honestly, it was just curiosity. Like, we were in discussion about psychedelics, and then someone said, I can get you some, and I was like, okay. And I didn't honestly think it would have as a profound effect that it did have on me. Um, I was not prepared for what had happened, but I'm completely happy it did, and I wouldn't take it back for anything. Next is from Christopher Lira. What was the most amount of shrooms you've ever taken? Five grams, and then like 10 minutes later I drank mushroom tea that was like 2.5 grams, and it was fucking crazy. One day I'll have to make a video about it. It was the first time I tripped out my boy Mike. We just immediately hit it off after that, became best friends. It was a fucking wild night. And I'll have to make a video about it sometime. Next is from Steven Warden. First time tripping advice? You want to have a whole plan. You want to make sure you're not doing anything for the next 18 to 24 hours. Um, one of the most important factors of the trip is your set and setting. I cannot stress that enough. You want to be completely free. You want, to, you want to not be stressed. You don't want to be pissed, mad, angry, any negative feelings. Uh, you want to be in a complete, comfortable environment. Uh, just do it around people you really trust and love. Communication is key. Listen to music that you love. And start out small. Never go big the first time. I mean, dip your foot in the water, if you would. And if you, you know, follow those... Do what makes you feel comfortable, you will have a great time. Next is from McKenna Melomania. Approximately how many times each have you done magic mushrooms, LSD, and DMT? I couldn't really hear you speak it up. Next is from McKenna Melomania. Approximately how many times each have you done magic mushrooms, LSD, and DMT? Um, DMT, I want to say I've had about five or six really strong breakthroughs and probably the same amount of failed attempts. LSD and mushrooms is much harder to answer. Uh, I want to say the mushrooms about 20 to 25 times. Pure real LSD maybe 10 or 15 times. I don't really know to be quite honest the exact number. I've lost count. Uh, so yeah. Next is from Alan Baggett. Have you ever tripped on shrooms in silent darkness or tripped while at the ocean? Truly revealing experiences. I would love to trip at the ocean. That's something I haven't yet done, but one day I definitely plan to. Uh, but I really love tripping on shrooms in silent darkness. That's fucking awesome. Some of my most profound mushroom trips was in complete silent darkness, just covered by just beauty. And I, yeah, I definitely agree with you on that. Next is from Buno Swan. What's your birthday? February 28th, 1992. The world was never the same. Next is from O Equinox. Do you put the toilet paper in the holder rolling towards you or away? I am the guy that puts it on the fucking sink. Like every household has that guy and that's me. I'm not about pulling, ripping, wrapping, wiping. I'm just about wrapping and wiping. In and out, son. So yeah, every household has that guy and that guy. If you're ever at my house and the toilet paper's on the roll, it wasn't me. <laughs> Next is from Ali Hussein Muhammad. What's the longest time you have ever been completely sober? No psychedelics, no alcohol, no weed, etc. Pretty much till I was 19, I didn't really do anything. Like I tried smoking pot once when I was 11, and it didn't get me high. Like I didn't really, I probably wasn't smoking it right. And then uh, I became straight edge at age 13. If you don't know what that is, it's a lifestyle in like the hardcore punk scene that abstains from alcohol, drinking, and doing drugs. And I was that way till I was 19. Then I was in a dark place in my life and I was just looking for an escape, so I tried alcohol and 
yeah, that's when my altered state journey, altered states began, pretty much. Next is from John T. Vandenbergen. Has doing psychedelics changed your spiritual beliefs in any way since starting? Oh, absolutely. fucking uh, I used to be completely atheist, like hopeless and faithless. I just thought we were all here from some freak accident, and when we die, it's just basically eternal sleep, like how it was before we were born. We're not going to remember any of it. And it was just kind of a dark way to live, in my own opinion. Uh, and then I took some psychedelics, mushrooms specifically, and then it put the thought in my head that there might be a lot more at play. And then I smoked DMT and I learned, you know, there's so many different levels. I mean, there's this plane of existence that we normally perceive and there's different levels of consciousness and death is only the next level of consciousness. And that feeling I got when I was able to understand that was so beautiful. I mean, I was, I was given faith and hope and understood that, that, you know, there's nothing to worry about. We're all from the same divine light and we all go back there. And that's a wonderful feeling. Next is from Sesh. What was the first drug you ever took? Uh, like I mentioned, I tried to smoke pot when I was 11. And then it didn't really get me high. So I guess you can count pot. Uh, but the first thing that really fucked me up was alcohol. And then the next day after that, I fell in love with cannabis. Uh, next is from the Champ 369 Name all the drugs that you've tried. <laughs> all right. Um... Well, let's get the ones that you guys know out of the way. There's LSD, DMT, psilocybin, mushrooms, um, well, pod, uh, cocaine, MDMA, then there's, I mean, nitrous, if that counts. I've had a LSA. Uh, someone asked me about that. I think that's in part two's questions. I've had mescaline, but it, I don't think I extracted it right, or we waited too long to drink it. Um, I've had that synthetic spice K2 bullshit, and it's fucking horrible. I've never touched meth. I've never touched heroin. I will never do that shit. Um, I mean, maybe I've taken a couple prescription pills. I don't know. I'm not big on prescription pills. Yeah, so that's pretty much it. I, yeah. Um, next is from the Dark Knight 000 and Buna Swan. Um, how old are you? What's your favorite thing to do while tripping? And what are your hobbies slash what do you do with your free time? Let me see those. That's the kind of, all right, so Buna Swan, what's your hobbies and what I do in my free time? Well, what I to answer both of your questions about the hobbies. Um, well, I mean, I YouTube and vlog, if that counts. I really love doing that, thinking of ideas for my videos and stuff like that. I love exploring, hiking, just going out and being uh, adventurous, I guess, getting into new things. I really don't have much free time. I'm, I work five days out of the week, and I only have Fridays and Saturdays off. So, I mean, those days are usually spent, you know, uh, well, if my son's here with my family, going out and being, doing the dad thing, or if he's gone exploring altered states of consciousness and hanging out with friends and just doing whatever. I mean, I smoke a lot of pot, if that counts. Um, I'm 23, and my favorite thing to do while tripping, I recently got into like loving, so that's been taking up a lot of my psychedelic experiences. It's so fucking fun. Uh, but, yeah, I just love uh, listening to Spangl. When I trip, Spangl is always there to accompany me. Uh, and then just closing my eyes. I love looking at close eye visuals. That's one of my favorite parts of the psychedelic experience. Next is from Bryce Fuston. What state do you live in? Arizona, born and raised. I've never lived anywhere else. Um, this is home. Dust of the deserts in my bones. Next is from Sean GLX. Worst trip experience? I'm going to have to make a video about this because I had a bad trip recently. Um, to sum it up, it was a fucking living nightmare. It's demons yelling and laughing at me, screaming maniacal thoughts, and just every fear was in my head. It's so scary. And, yeah, I mean, there's so much in this. I'm gonna. This deserves its own video, and I'll definitely make it soon. But, yeah, it was so terrifying. It was a living nightmare. I was able to pull myself out of it, but... I mean, in the end, it, the most interesting part is it was one of the most beneficial trips I've ever had because it, 
now that I've seen the darkness, the light has never been so bright. Like it added so much more profoundness and so much more meaning to my past trips. And it's very interesting because a lot of people I've talked to have had bad trips too say the same thing. It's, it's one of the most beneficial trips and that really, uh, it's really interesting to me. Next is from Alejandro Gonzalez. Were you scared on your first DMT trip? You seem awesome to hang out with, bro. Peace. Don't stop with YouTube, bro. Keep it up. Thanks, man. Um, fear is not the word. I was very nervous. I was very anxious. Um, it took me so long to even put the pipe to my mouth and hit it. Like I kept having to use the restroom. I kept like being OCD and seeing something in the back that bothered me and I had to go fix it. And then when I finally got past it, I sat down and did it. And really, there's nothing to be afraid of. Like, of course, it's so alien and out of this world, but, I mean, it's beautiful. It's so beautiful. And it changed my life after that. Next is from Lexi Pfeiffer. Can you talk a little more in depth about the entities slash beings you've seen while tripping? I have this crazy fear of aliens, and I want to try DMT. Is that something I should be concerned about? I mean, if you're afraid while you're in this place, from my personal experiences, they are really calming. They really calm you down. They assure you that they love you. They're not there to hurt you. And they, want, they really want to teach you things. They want to show you whatever it is they're showing me. I mean, I've met God. Like, they're not really aliens. They're more like gods and goddesses, honestly. Like, the last... One of the last ones I met or I discussed in my videos was the like Mayan Aztec god thing that was creating universes. His face was covered in like psychedelic colors and fractals and it was con just completely moving around all over. And he was just calming me down and he was like, pay attention, look, look at this. And it was like making this thing and it looked like star, it was just energy and it was just growing and growing so powerful. And there was, I've met goddesses where these two like angel entities took me on this journey and they were showing me these geometric pyramids and they were really wanting me to pay attention to these pyramids and they were telling me why but I obviously can't remember when you come back to this reality uh, but basically the vibe I was getting is that these pyramids are very important to mankind where it's a cosmic event whether it's going to happen or is it already happened I don't know but they really wanted me to see these pyramids and understand its importance and then I met a giant fucking entity one time when I smoked DMT like that greeted me right when I entered the void, picked me up, moved me to this place, and then he started waving lights. And when lights would the lights would hit me, for a second I get like a flash of history. I've seen and like covered in fractals, like men as apes, the Chinese dynasty, ancient Egypt, like all like for just a sec, boom, boom, boom. And like he was just taking me on a journey through time. Fucking weird. <laughs> and uh then I met the f the first entity was uh, that one with an elongated head and a giant eye and he was just all knowing and he was telling me and just had a conversation with full like conversation with this guy I had no idea what it really consisted of but he was calming me down and you know they just really love you and they want to show you but I mean to answer your question they I mean they're alien as because I mean to the sense that they're not of this world but they're more like spirits energy and they really care for you they really want to show you things and yeah, i mean i i don't know i don't really fear aliens aliens kind of interest me so i can't really say we're in the same boat but they're not like the grays or like mars attack or et or they're not gonna like a fucking experiment on you and anally probe you or something you know what i'm saying so next is from j cruels 101 Wait. I don't know, though, because I read DMT, The Spirit Molecule, and they were comparing DMT to alien abduction phenomenon, and they're quite similar. So that question's very, that's a very interesting question. I don't know if I can really answer that. To me, no, but maybe to others. I don't know. This is your experience, so I really couldn't say. I just yeah. wanted to add that, sorry. Yeah. Uh, next is from J. Curls 101 Sup, Icarus. Love your channel. I had a question about the use of psychedelics as a beginner. I'm a dedicated pot smoker, but I've always been interested in things like shrooms, LSD, DMT, etc. 
in your opinion, what is the best starter psychedelic? Mushrooms, for sure. Definitely. You want to start out small. Uh, gram and a half. Two grams. 2.5. And then just work your way up. I mean, there's really no need to start out big. Um, and then, like, when you get a reliable source for, like, pure LSD, you take that when you're comfortable. And then DMT, uh, when you're really comfortable with altered states and psychedelics and yeah, uh, but mushrooms is definitely a great start. Next is from Derp. Front to back or back to front? <laughs> <laughs> I'm assuming you're talking about the way I wipe my ass. So I'm going to say front to back. Like, why would you go back to front? Like, if you do that, you can get shit on your balls and, or, or snatch. Like, and that's not healthy. That's not cool. I'm, I'm sure doctors everywhere would not recommend that. <laughs> yeah, wipe my ass. Ah, there you go. <laughs> Next is from Noah997. How hard was it for you to find LSD the first time you bought it? So fucking easy. It like literally fell on my lap. <laughs> but the second time's a different story. So hard. I mean, it was, I was just dosed with like research. Like, yeah, I got LSD, bro. Here you go. This is not LSD. This is robot semen. Like, so fucking hard to find it. Now, I mean, Lucy comes and she goes, and I know that struggle. I know how hard it is to find it, but. Yeah, sucks. I don't really have to worry about that now. Though. Next is from the dudes. What are your thoughts on MDMA? Ever done it? If you have done it, or at least have a well-formulated opinion on it, it would be great if you made a video about it. I have done MDMA. I haven't had it in a few years, so I can't really say, like, I have a well-formulated opinion on it. It made me feel amazing. It's very therapeutic. But I haven't had it in a few years, so I can't really say, I mean, what it really did for me. But I just, honestly, it's been something I've been wanting to do lately, so I probably will get a little bit more into it and discuss it, definitely. I mean, that's what I do, so yeah, for sure. Next is from James Malik. What's your height? Five eight and a half. the last time I checked. Next is from Eric. Have you ever bought Mimosa Hostilla Spark to extract your own DMT? I think it would be a lot better than buying it on the streets. I've had a Facebook user named Raul Duke ask me that too, if I would use Mimosa Hostilla. And to answer both of your questions, I've never actually personally extracted. If I were to extract, I would use Mimosa Hostilla. One, because I really know, I know someone personally who has, and they probably could help me. And two, I heard it's easier and it contains more DMT than the Acacia, but yeah, I haven't. But honestly, the DMT I get is probably way more pure than I, my dumbass could ever extract. So I'm just cool with that, honestly. Next is from Caden Quinn. LOL, don't worry about the vids, man. We understand. Quality over quantity, am I right? <laughs> I have two questions. What kind of music do you listen to? And what's your Spotify name? Because I really want to check out your playlist. You sound like you got a rad taste in music, man. I didn't even know you could make sp or make and share playlists on Spotify. So because you brought that to my attention. I should totally make a trip playlist for you guys. So when you guys trip out, you just go to the Icarus 480 playlist. I'll do that soon. Um, my, as far as my Spotify name, it's probably like Icarus 480. I don't even really remember. I haven't, like, it's just logged in. It's been logged in since I've got the fucking thing. Um, but as far as what music I personally like, I used to be a lot more like punk and like hardcore, like uh, Terror, Rotting Out, Backtrack, uh, different things like that. And then... Uh, I don't really listen to much hardcore anymore. I really, I'm starting to get more into trance stuff like Infected Mushroom. I love Spongle. Spongle is my absolute fucking favorite. Uh, those two are musical fucking geniuses in my opinion. Uh, Desert Dwellers, Future Primitive, Tipper. Eh, um, do you have a good idea? Next is from Derp. What would I see if I were to run along a beam of light? <laughs> I have no idea how to answer that. I'm guessing light. Um, if you're running along a beam of light, I'm guessing you're going through some type of DMT trip, so you might see some entities telling us said hi, but I don't know. I've never ran along a beam of light, bro, so I can't say. <laughs> Next is from Croatian Bios. What do you work as? I'm a fucking call center agent. I've been there for two years, but I love it. Like, it's... 
good money. It's a family. Like, everyone knows me. I can be my complete self. I can wear trippy shirts. I wear hats with weed plants on them. I don't get drug tested. I love this place. I mean, it's not something I'm obviously going to do for the rest of my life, but it gets the bills done, supports my journeys through psychedelic realms, and puts food in everyone's mouths. I'm happy. Next is from Young Lucas. Sup, dude? What's the coolest visuals you've gotten tripping on acid? Shout out from Sao Paulo. Um, I love when my face does the fear and loathing in Las Vegas morphing. Um, that's one of my favorites. But uh, I love staring at the roof, man. When you stare at the roof and you're on a high dose of LSD or something, like, you'll see so much in that motherfucker. I've seen flowers bloom and, like, all kinds of crazy shit. Visual trips are the best. <laughs> I love. But honestly, I have crazy. I have some really crazy visuals with mushrooms. I've discussed the time I've hallucinated myself and a cat. That was my absolute favorite fucking visual I've ever had. Just bam, I had a cat. <laughs> it's so sick. Next is from Derp. What was your most embarrassing moment? And mimosa, stillis, or acacia confusa? Mimosa, like I said earlier, I think it contains more DMT, and I know individuals who have extracted with mimosa who could probably help me if I were to do it, so, mimosa. My most embarrassing moment, it's kind of hard to talk about. I was in fifth grade, and I had a huge crush on this chick, right? And you know how fifth grade crushes are, that's some real shit. So anyways, uh... We're, uh, back now, at my school, like most American schools, there's recess with the playground and shit after lunch. Uh, word on the playground is she was digging me, right? So I'm like, oh shit. But once I find that out, her best friend just gets true crime streaks of New York fucking thrown at the ground. What? Well, bam! You know what I'm talking about? And, uh, <laughs> fucking... So everyone accuses me. I, t it's probably been 10, 12 years. I didn't fucking do it. I'll stick to my guns. Was not me. But everyone accused me of doing it, and because, and when she heard about that, pretty much fucking ruined any Prince Charming fucking thought she probably had of me. But I really liked this girl, so I wasn't giving up. So I wrote her a note, pouring out my feelings, explaining that it wasn't me, and you know, when I find out who it is, beat the shit out of him for tainting my name. And so I go to lunch, and it's recess, and I'm, I was an ugly motherfucker. I looked like a rat back in the day, dude. So this took a lot of courage, and then. Bell rings, it's now or never, son, I gotta give her this note, and I see her crossing in front of the swing set, and I catch, I, I cross her path, I'm like, hey, take this note and read it in class, and I walk off, biggest mistake of my life, because she didn't read that note, she threw it behind her, and my classmates fucking saw it, and they picked that fucker up, so anyways, I'm lining up, I hear laughing, I'm like, oh shit, Who's laughing? So I go over, hey guys, what's going on? <laughs> and they're holding my fucking note and they're reading it. And this all happened in slow motion. I was like, no! Try to grab it. Three fifth graders over, or yeah, three fifth graders overpower me and hold me back. They continue to read it. And I'm trying to fight and they're just reading and laughing at me. And I finally overpower these three fifth graders, rip it out of my hand, but the damage was done. Everyone knew my crush. Everyone knew how fucking cheesy I was. And I did not hear the end of it for months and months and months and every time I saw it, it was the most embarrassing fucking thing I ever ever yeah it was, that was definitely my most embarrassing moment I still have flashbacks let's move on to the next question <laughs> alright these next two questions are similar so I'll read both right. uh, first is from Andrew Daly what age is too young in your opinion for drugs shrooms pot LSD DMT etc and how old were you when you first tried them uh, the next one is from Swift Psychotic hey man three questions I'm 15 and I've only smoked weed but I've been researching psychedelics for the past six months um, they're so fucking interesting to me and nothing has ever grabbed my attention as much as this has so what age would you recommend starting at and should I just start on psilocybin and move my way up? Two, I haven't met anyone that is even remotely interested in psychedelics. How did you meet people that have the same interests as you? What was your religion before psychedelics and have your views changed? So as far as the religious psychedelics thing, uh, I pretty much answered that one earlier. Um, as far as met anyone in real life that is remotely interested in psychedelics, how did you meet people in real life that have the same interests as you? 
Well, one of my best friends, Mike, dimethyltryptamine, I met him on Instagram. <laughs> yeah, it rhymed. Oh, but um, I met him on Instagram, and basically he lived near me, and I figured that out. And then he figured out I lived near him. I was into psychedelics. He was into psychedelics. Like, yeah, let's do some psychedelics. And we just became best fucking friends. Like, literally, this dude's like, we're two peas in a fucking pot, dude. Like, never met anyone so similar. But anyone else that's remotely related to psychedelics, I just put myself out there. Uh, show that, I, I mean, I'm a proud psycho now, and... Yes, I mean, I really, I mean, I've honestly turned a lot of my friends into psychonauts. Like, when I tried LSD, and you know, I was like, yo, you gotta try this, dude. And then, you know, but I really couldn't answer that. And as far as your ages, now, you're, now I've answered, you know, work your way up. But in my own honest opinion, this is probably not the answer you want. But I didn't even do drugs in high school. So I really couldn't say the effect it would have on you. In my own personal opinion, I think you should wait until you're about 18 to try. So, I mean, pot's one thing. You smoke weed on weekends. I mean, by all means, I've seen productive 15 to 16-year-old stoners. Uh, as long as you're not letting it, like, take over your life or anything, you're, by all means, light that shit up. But as far as psychedelics, my own opinion, I think you should wait. I mean, geometrics and the meaning of life and interdimensional beings can wait until you're done with at least high school or, like, biology class. I don't know. It just could be described. You, you could take this advice or you could throw it in the trash and do it as psychedelics. But in my own personal opinion, I think you should wait until until you're done with that shit. Because right now you're in a stage in your life where things really are important. It doesn't seem like it. It just seems like complete bullshit. But later in life, you're going to be at, where, like, at my stage where I'm like, okay, I dicked around my whole fucking life and now... I have to struggle because of it, and it's much easier if you just get through that shit, and then you don't have to worry. In my own personal opinion, take it or leave it. Last question um, is from Erica S. Does it ever bother you that you're more known for drugs? Um, absolutely fucking not. I mean, if it bothered me, why would I continuously post videos talking about it? As a matter of fact, I think we should all be posting videos talking about these experiences that we have and what they do for us because these substances have been damned and shamed for far too fucking long by people that have never even tried them and that pisses that does that pisses me off more than anything in this world terence mckenna said find the others show them that we're not all lazy-eyed psychotic degenerates that we're working class people we're fathers we're hard-working people and these substances have given me the most profound beautiful life-changing experiences that I could have never imagined having without them. They can turn a degenerate piece of shit like me, who doesn't give a fuck about anything, into someone that thinks twice about stepping on a bug or feels sorrow when he throws a tr piece of trash on the ground. I feel like these substances, when used in the right way, can be the most beneficial thing this world has ever given, but they're, sh they're taken from us because higher minds know that. They know what would happen. They, it's all greed. Everything, if we were all to revolutionize and bring altered states, people would look at the bigger picture and understand we're living bullshit. We're living a bullshit life. We're, we're doing what they want. And I'm here to spread a message. I'm here to show them. I'm here to show you guys what these substances do for me, what they could potentially do for you. And I'm proud to be a psycho now. I'm proud to be a fucking weirdo, by all means. And I wouldn't have it any other way. So that's part one, ladies and gentlemen. It's peace, love, and smoke DMT.